The entire box was shipped on a cardboard box on a pallet. And that was amazing. That, that they came in vertically. The height was six feet, nine and, nine and a half or nine and three quarters inch tall. It was amazing. All right, one of my biggest issues with the black box currently is I don't have a good way of keeping the bike upright in the black box. As you can see, it's tipped over. And the reality is I'm most likely going to have to take front wheel off whenever I put this in there. These locks are awesome. See right here, they're just nicely made, very clean, work well. This latch, uh, it's constantly coming off. And you can see I have this little piece right here. So I stick that on there, latch it. I mean, it feels pretty tight. It's constantly uh, bouncing off down the road. The other thing is I put a bag on here. This one's not very good, but I'll show that later just to keep all the slush off the locks. The lights work really well, pressed with that. Okay, the lights are connected to the, the RV right here. I had to get an adapter. The terrain only comes with a seven blade and I needed a four pin to go into there. So I bought it at Tractor Supply. Alrighty, here's what I had in the black box uh, just this week for trips out to Shindigan. Fat bike and uh, snowshoe, and I have these backcountry skis that uh, basically you just walk around. You don't actually uh, ski downhill very steeply. You know, they've, they've got fabric on the bottom, basically keeps you from sliding backwards. Uh, the solo stove, which I just wanted to see how it fit in the black box. I haven't actually used it. Inside the black box itself, you can see that I put this entryway rug, just trying to keep the bottom from getting scratched up. And then I cut holes in it so that the hooks could come through. And then I have these foam pads to help keep the sides from getting scratched, which you can see right there, it's already scratched from the fat bike and back here it's already scratched from the studs on the fat bike tires you can see with the black box how it's kind of leaning down it's not really a problem i would like to kind of have that set up a bit more i'm not sure how if that's going to be possible i can move in the rack attack right here one more space and then also you can see that go arrow piece could also go in a bit more okay you can probably tell that the black box is uh, not tilted down as much i move the black box piece right here inward to the, to the closest position see right there and i put on a rhino usa uh, hitch tightener right here hard to see because of the snow you can see that piece right here there we go see that that helped quite a bit. And this part right here, I tightened it up. So that's sitting up there much higher and looks a lot nicer. Okay, let's see how it works when we get on the road after this snowstorm. So I built a bike holder out of some spare wood I had around the house for my fat bike to hold it into the black box and keep it upright. It's pretty rudimentary. The big thing is I didn't want to spend the plus dollars for the piece that Let's Go Arrow wanted to sell. So I made my own. This works. I plan to build something better. My biggest challenge was to make sure that the bike and frame wouldn't tip over inside the, the black box as I'm driving down the road. 
So what I came up with is a couple wings part way up on the frame to make sure that the frame itself cannot move sideways back or along the same axis as braking and acceleration. So how did I do that? Well, let me show you. So right here, you can see that there's a piece of wood that's screwed on to the vertical member right here and is up against the side of the black box itself so it can't move. There's another one on the other side. Also right here on the back, you can see that this is secured to the back plate of my frame. So that's not gonna move. The two pieces in front, you can see are not attached to each other. I had planned to put a cross piece right here, but that wasn't gonna work because I had to slide the rear cassette and uh, axle lever through the wooden frame or into the, into the frame itself. And if I had a piece here, I wouldn't be able to do it because this is thinner than the uh, axle handle and the uh, rear derailleur. This piece right here was very flexible by itself. I only had four screws down at the bottom of the piece of wood and that wasn't gonna be enough to keep it from moving. So I have that wing piece right here that you can't see just below my hand to uh, keep it from moving on both sides. You can see that the bike is pretty stable. I mean, there's some movement, especially with the front tire. You can see with the front tire attached, the bike still wobbles and moves back and forth, but I think it'll be fine for this particular situation. I plan to put in a axle mount down in the bottom of the black box and attach it there and be able to take the front wheel off and keep it in that way. That'll be a lot more efficient. But anyway, wanted to get this black box video done. And uh, yeah, this was the last piece, sending it out. Tomorrow I'm going to Shindigan. We'll see how it does. And I'll take another video there, but uh, that'll be a separate video. All right, folks. Thanks for watching.